All right, let's take a look at another uh, empirical formula example. This one, though, instead of just mass amounts, gram amounts, this time we're given percentages, and this is how oftentimes you'll see these kinds of problems. So this one says a compound contains 37.5% carbon, 12.5% hydrogen, and 50% oxygen. Again, it's by mass. What is the empirical formula? Uh, for this one. So it works pretty much the same way as, uh, as if you have grams. In fact, all you've got to do is just change each of these percent signs into a gram amount. So instead of 37.5% uh, carbon, we're going to make that 37.5 grams of carbon. That's a 7 right there. Uh, and do the same thing for the hydrogen. So that 12.5% Hydrogen, we're going to make that 12.5 grams of hydrogen. And finally, the 50% uh, oxygen will make that grams of oxygen. All right, so just change each of those percent signs to gram signs because, again, it's by mass. If you had 100 grams of the stuff, then you'd have those same masses of each of those elements. And from here on, it's just like uh, what we've done in the other example then. We're just going to take each of these mass amounts, convert them into, uh, into mole amounts. And so we want to cancel out the grams of carbon. So I'm going to put that in the denominator, convert that to moles of carbon, one mole. And so from the periodic table, it's 12.0 or 12.01. I'm just going to go one place after the decimal for that. So 12.0 there. Uh, do the same thing for the hydrogen. And so one mole of hydrogen, this one is moles of carbon up here. Uh, it's 1.0 grams of hydrogen there. And then the same thing for the grams of oxygen. We want that to cancel out moles of oxygen in the numerator, and that's 16 grams. Again, so the 1 here, the 12 here, the 16 here, all coming from those masses for the periodic table. 15.9994 for oxygen, again, we'll call that 16. 12 for the carbon, here's hydrogen over here, 1.0. So that's where we get those numbers from. All right, and so when we do our division, then we're going to take each of these values, divide by uh, the molar mass for that, 37.5 divided by 12, that comes out to 3.125. Again, that's moles of carbon. And then 12.5 divided by 1, it's just going to be 12.5, that's now moles of hydrogen. And 50 divided by 16, you might notice something kind of strange here. We get 3.125 moles of oxygen, same number of moles of carbon. And that, what that tells us right off the bat is we've got the same number of atoms of carbon and oxygen then in this sample. All right, the next step then, once we've got mole amounts from here on, whatever we do to one of these, we're going to do the same thing to all. We're going to divide them all by the smallest of the amount. And it turns out two of them have the same smallest amount. That's that 3.125. And so that's what we're going to divide everything by then is divide by that 3.125 amount. So 3.125 divided by itself is just a 1 there. 12.5 divided by 3.125 comes out exactly to 4. And again, dividing by itself just gives us a 1. There's our whole numbers. That's what we're looking for is this whole number ratio. It's 1 carbon to 4 hydrogens to one oxygen for this. So the empirical formula here, it's one carbon, CH4 for those four hydrogens, and one oxygen. Now, does that mean this is the molecular formula? No, not at all. It could be. It might be one carbon, four oxygens, one uh, four hydrogens, one oxygen, or it could be two carbons, eight hydrogens, and two oxygens, or three carbons, twelve hydrogens, and three oxygens. This is just telling us what the simple ratio is of carbon to hydrogen, oxygen. It doesn't really tell us anything else about it other than what that ratio is, and so uh, we'll learn how to do that a little bit later.